Shalom, fellow subscribers, I'm his priest brother to Robert Carr, and um, as progress from a fellow subscriber slash brother, friend of mine, um, he requested a volume three to be done concerning the uh, the book of Enoch, um, or cutting the book of Enoch, or exposing the book of Enoch. I did two volumes over the past couple months, um, two, three months, concerning the exposure of the book of Enoch as far as men and people amongst the Gentiles claiming that the book of Enoch is the authentic word of the Lord or it has some form of authenticity in it that it should be uh, valuable or valid for doctrine okay so I've been doing two volumes of this for the past two to three months disproving that according to scripture and this is a, a reload backing up from my first two Enoch videos I did about a year or two ago. The first one was um, angels having sex with um, women. Okay, question mark. Like, did that really occur? Did angels really have sex with women? And then the second part was basically um, uh, the book of Enoch in itself that I did a video on the Sword Cuts channel about a year and some change ago in which um, that got a, a good substantial amount of views and responses from amongst my nation of Israel, as well as from amongst the Gentiles, you understand? So basically, um, just going furthermore into it, revisiting uh, what was being brought out, um, um, I had told brothers, okay, me and a brother, Masha, had told men that um, basically we was going to um, go into the book of Enoch in itself and bring out certain things about it to prove that it's off according to scripture. And when we say scripture, we're dealing with the uh, King James Holy Bible. The King James Version 1611, the Holy Bible, the Word of the Lord. Okay, that's what we mean by scripture. Okay, it's concerning the book of the Lord, which is the Bible, the King James Version Bible, okay, in itself. All right. So basically, um, I wanted to go into the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 12. Um, quick fast. Um, I wanted to bring out something concerning it because um uh, I'm gonna read this, all right? And this is Matthew chapter 9, verse 12. But when Yahweh Shah, which is Jesus, heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, there's a, there's, there's a reason why I'm reading the scripture right here. Okay, when Christ said that, go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners of repentance. And uh, the reason why I'm reading that scripture quick fast is because when I when I went into the book of um when I went into the book of uh, Enoch, um I went into chapter forty, and um I happened to have downloaded the book of Enoch onto my cell phone, in which um I clarified it with the book in itself from um off of um the website um that you could go or the book in itself, which I don't have with me. But I do have the uh, book and downloaded form in which y'all can read along with me. And this is uh, chapter 40. Okay, I'm going to read chapter 40, brief, the briefing to show that this is the book of Enoch I'm reading from, but it's off my cell phone. Okay, right here. So uh, this is chapter 40. Okay, I'm going into the book of Enoch here. And it says, um, after this, I beheld thousands of thousands and myriads of myriads and an infinite number of people standing before the Lord of Spirits and verse 2 says on the four wings likewise of the Lord of Spirits on the four sides I perceived others besides those who were standing before him their names too I know because the angel who proceeded with me declared them to me and discovering to me every secret thing so that's how the chapter 40 of the book of Enoch start off and um, like I said that's on my cellular phone, I had downloaded, okay, the book of Enoch. So I'm reading chapter 40. And to get to the point, I wanted to scroll down to um, um, verse verse um, 8. I'm going to read the last two verses, okay, verses 8 through 9. After this, I besought the angel of peace who proceeded with me to explain all that was concealed. I said to him, who are those whom I have seen on the four sides? And who words I have heard and written down? He replied, the first is the merciful, the patient, the holy Michael. Now, I'm going to read verse 9. 
The second is he who presides over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael. The third who presides over all that is powerful is Gabriel. And the fourth who presides over repentance and the hope of those that will inherit eternal life is Phanuel. These are the four angels of the Most High Yahweh and their four voices which at that time I heard. So I wanted to focus on that alleged concept according to the book of Enoch of the fourth angel. Okay, because it says who presides over repentance and the hope of those that will inherit eternal life. So now it says here that the angel Phanuel is the one responsible for repentance and is a hope of all things that seek eternal life. This angel named Phanuel. Now, I believe there was a man in a scripture named Phanuel, if I'm not mistaken, but I've not yet found any angel, according to the Bible, that was named Phanuel. But, okay, let's just say that this is added information that secluded from the King James Version Bible. But it says here that this Phanuel has an office, like Michael has an office, Gabriel has an office, and Raphael had an office, according to the book of Enoch, chapter 40. And it speaks of a fourth angel that had an office. And it said this angel's office, which was a name Phanuel, presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life. These are the four angels of the Most High, Yahweh, and their four voices, which at that time I heard. So now I'm going to read Matthew chapter 9, verse 12, verse 13 again. Okay, but when Yahweh Jesus heard that, he said unto them that they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am come to call the righteous, but sinners, I, or such so, like, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, when I read about Phanuel, it says the fourth who resides over repentance. So it's some angel that resides over repentance. But Christ just said, I'm the one that's calling for repentance over the, over the sons of men. But it says, Phanuel, the hope of those who will inherit eternal life. So then I go to Acts, the fifth chapter and the 30th verse. Okay. And when I read, this is all New Testament for you Kunalites out there. You love the New Testament as well. It's Torah observant. So... And you Christians, okay, you New Testament Israelites. So I'm going to Acts chapter 5, verse 30. And it says, okay, the power of our fathers raised up Jesus, which is Yahweh Shah in the Hebrew, okay, whom ye slew and hang on a tree, which is rep representative to the cross. Him, this is verse 31, him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So according to the scripture, the Holy Bible, it says that the Most High raised up his son Christ, okay, to be a savior and for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Which goes to show you Christ did not come and die for all nations concerning their repentance. All right. He did that for Israel to get them in order first and foremost. Then when Israel get in order, then we become ministers and priests and kings of the Most High. And then we subdue the nations with the word of the Lord. And those that don't want to get in line, we beat them with a rod of iron. All right. Until they be destroyed. All right. But that was the purpose. The ministry come first forth to Israel. It's for us to get ourselves in order because we're the ruler nation. Okay. The chosen nation above all nations on this earth. Okay. We're the sons of the Most High. And we're to go out there as we gather ourselves together. And the purpose is amongst the Gentiles to show them their judgment, okay, for their disobedience to the word of the Lord, as well as their mistreatment of our nation as a nation, okay? And we're going to subdue them with the word of the Lord. We're going to put chains on them, you understand? And we're going to put them in captivity, okay, with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's the purpose, right? But according to Enoch chapter 40, all right? It says something a little bit otherwise, and I'm dealing with the um, the repentance issue with who the Lord rose up for repentance. And we just read in the book of Acts 
the Lord rose up his son Christ. Okay, so I'm gonna read verse 9 again. Okay, well, I'm actually gonna get to the point concerning the fourth angel in uh, the book of Enoch, chapter 40, verse 9. And the fourth who presides over repentance. Now, where is that in the scripture of an angel named Phanuel residing over repentance? When I just read two scriptures, about four or five verses, that speaks of Christ as the one that set over repentance. But this chapter 40, verse 9 says some angel named Phanuel is. Okay, presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life. So we're supposed to hope for an angel named Phanuel, according to the book of Enoch, not Christ. Forget about Christ, according to the book of Enoch, your pagan infested Gentile indoctrinated book. We're supposed to pray to some angel named Phanuel. Who the hell is that? Where the hell is that in the scriptures? Okay, I just read about Christ dying and being in repentance for the nation of Israel, who the Most High rose up. So I'm going to Acts 19 and 4. There's another scripture I found to cut that. And this is the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Did John preach about an angel, Phanuel? John the Baptist preached about Christ as being the one that we should look for to, unto repentance. But according to your book of Enoch, not mine, but your indoctrinated book of Enoch, it says, Phanuel, who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life. So we have to hope on it, or some angel named Phanuel for eternal life. I could cut you with John chapter 3, verse 16. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous here. Okay, we could just go simply into St. John chapter 3, verse 16. That old Christian faithful scripture, that old Negro spiritual, okay, that old Gentile misunderstood John 3, 16. I never knew that one day I would be pulling out John 3, 16 to cut a doctrine. Usually, through the Spirit of the Most High, we cut John 3, 16 with the misunderstanding that the Gentiles, Christians, and Kunalites and Kuns which have come towards us. But instead, this is a rare circumstance in which we will use in this situation, John chapter 3, verse 16, okay, to cut a doctrine, okay, because it says Phanuel is the one that we shall hope for for repentance, and Phanuel is the one that we shall look for for everlasting life, okay, and that's where the Lord rose up, according to your book of Enoch, chapter 40, verse, verse 9. But John chapter 3, 16 says, okay, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, no, we should believe in the archangel Phanuel. It says, whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now I'm talking about Christ. <laughs> Where is this archangel Phanuel that your book of Enoch says that we must hope and pray unto for everlasting life? Where is it at? But men say we crazy though. They say I'm crazy. What we do is cut doctrines with the word of the Lord. And people say we're crazy for doing it. Okay? But it says, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to keep reading it until, 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 until it's embedded into your skull to prove this book of Enoch. It's toilet paper, man. Okay? It's toilet paper. And a lot of you men that's reading to this book of Enoch, the Lord that puts spirits on you and make you effeminate as hell and buttercupish. For some, I report as men have become effeminate. The Lord then put effeminate a lot of feminine demons to enter into you because Solomon already warned about dealing with these pagan infested books. And you should only be seeking out of the book of the Lord, like it says in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, and read. Okay, so we're going to read um, the book of Enoch, chapter 40, verse 9, to disprove how it's off and it's pagan infested. And Enoch never wrote no such book. Okay, and it says right here, um, this, is, um, this is to the point of, Chapter 40, verse 9, like what I've been reading for the past like 10 minutes on and off. And the fourth, okay, who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life. This is Phanuel. Where is that in the scriptures? We just read John chapter 3, verse 16, how the Lord rose up Christ for repentance and the hope for everlasting life. These are the four angels of the Most High, Yahweh, and their four voices, which at that time I heard. So we're going to go to, uh, I think there's another one. Um, 
Thanks, John chapter 5, verse 39. There's many more, but I'm going to read this one. Search the scriptures. See, that's your problem. You're not searching the scriptures. See, men may say I'm arrogant, but whatever. <laughs> search the scriptures. I mean, bottom line is if you search the scriptures, you understand, then you don't have to worry about a doctrine being cut because it's in the scripture. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But according to the book of Enoch, it says fanual. Okay, is the hope for eternal life. But Christ says, search the scriptures in them you hope eternal life. Because Christ is the word of the Lord. The scriptures is Christ. All right. And it says, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, says Yahweh Christ. They say nothing about an archangel named Fanuel. It says me. Okay, me. St. John, let's go to another one, chapter 10, verse 25. Okay. Yahweh Shah answered, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But your book of Enoch says, this, this, this is... Let me scroll up to chapter 40 and quit fast and drop down to 31 by an accident. Let me scroll to verse chapter 40, verse 9 in the book of Enoch again. Right? This okay, it says, um, to get to the point, and the fourth who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life is Phanuel. These are the four angels of the most high Yahweh, and their four voices which at that time I heard. This is what your book says. I'm reading out of it. It's a downloaded version that I checked from the book source itself. And I downloaded it onto my phone. And it says, Fanuel, but the Lord says Christ. Okay, the Bible, the scriptures says Christ. Okay, Jesus in the Greek, Yahweh Shah in Hebrew, or Yeshua, or however, whatever form of Hebrew you speak and your term or accent of it or whatnot, it's all pointing to the Son of the Most Highest, and it's not dealing with no archangel by the name of Fanuel. And I'm trying to figure who the hell is that, but maybe I'll do further research on that concerning that. But I'm not done yet because I got disgusted reading this book of Enoch to the point where I just wanted to read just a couple chapters. I read all this, and it was I started to get sick to my stomach, okay, because I'm like, this is not the word of the Lord. and we're not supposed to be dealing with that, according to the scripture. Um, we're only supposed to be dealing with uh, the word of the Lord as it is written. So, um, let me see here. I'm going to go to uh, chapters 61 through 105. I'm going to click on this on my phone. And um, we're going to uh, fast forward to, uh, I believe, as uh, my notes tell me, look somewhere in chapter 69. Okay. So, we're going to look. Somewhere in chapter 69, Heather. And I'm going to make this screen a little larger here. Okay. All right. Um, I think this is it. Is this it? Okay. Let me, let me make sure this is it. Okay. Uh, all right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me make sure this is it. Uh, so you got chapter 69. Okay, after this, the Son of Man, living with the Lord of Spirits, was exalted by the inhabitants of the earth. It was exalted the chariots of the Spirit, and the name went forth in the midst of them. From that time, I was drawn into the midst of them, but he seated me between two spirits, between the north and the west, where the angels received their ropes to measure out a place for the elect and the righteous. There I beheld the fathers of the first men and the saints who dwell in that place forever. Okay, that's not what I wanted. There was one I wanted concerning... Uh, this guy, um, this they spoke of another angel, okay, uh, Javon and Gabriel, okay, Javon, okay, some angel named Javon. I gotta look for that man. I thought I had it here. I was just skimming through this and I was like, what the hell is going on here? Okay, uh, right. So so my. Basically, it didn't give credit. My point is that it didn't give credit to Eve. 
Okay, it's not credit to Eve as far as a Zoha, but as far as who deceived them. Instead of saying that it was a serpent, it said it was two angels that deceived Eve. It was somewhere in here. I'm gonna find, I'll probably put it in the next volume. Okay, but they made mention of a different angel, and they called his name um, Gadriel, okay, and Jevon, J-E-A-V-O-N. I'm going to look for it, okay, and um, when I when I find it, okay, I'm going to get back to you on that one, though. Um, but I was like, wow, this is crazy, man, because it gave an understanding of, okay, such and such. Okay, um, matter of fact, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pause this video for now. It's going to be too... I'm going to make this a 20 minute, 21 sec part right here. I'm going to upload part two and I'm going to bring out that. Okay. And um, maybe I was exaggerating. I'm going to see where it's at. And when I bring it up, then um, that'll be part two. But that's the first cut, which is chapter 40 in the book of Enoch. So um, part two, I'm going to try to have it. If I don't have it in part two, then I'm just going to go into the, um, to the giants, which is what I said I was going to go into the last video I did with the brother Masha. I'm going to go into the giant, so um, stay tuned. Shalom.